welcome to our virtual theater talk for Roundabout Theater Company's production of Trouble in Mind by Alice Childress, its Broadway debut. I'm Nafisa Monroe. I am a teaching artist with Roundabout, and I am coming to you from a land that of many intersecting indigenous folks, both current and traditional. They include the Mississauga, the Adirondack, the Neutral Nation, and the Haudenosaunee. And I am Leah Reddy. I'm also a teaching artist with Roundabout Theatre Company, and I am coming to you from the traditional and current lands of the Lenny Lenape people, known to many folks as Manhattan. I'm so excited that we get to talk about this and that we get to talk about Miss Alice Childress. Miss Alice Childress. Alice Childress was born Louise Henderson on October 13th, 1916 in Charleston, South Carolina. Her father was a sailor and her mother was a dressmaker. Hmm. And they split up when she was fairly young and she moved north to Harlem, to 118th Street specifically, to live with her maternal grandmother, a woman named Eliza White. And she gives Eliza a lot of credit for both her education and her imagination, right? There, there have been several interviews where people have asked Ms. Childress, which playwrights influenced her and she says that she, she says that because of her limited education formal education let's say she actually didn't know many playwrights many at least many playwrights that looked like her but she does credit her grandmother with creating this ability to tell stories and to create stories Childress has left school as a teenager. She's working. She's involved in theater. And in 1935, she marries an actor named Alvin Childress. And later that year, their daughter, Jean, was born. Mm -hmm. And in 1940, both of them join a new theater company called the American Negro Theater, right? Yes, the American Negro Theater. So Aunt A-N-T had four goals that they were governed by. So I'm gonna share those with you. One was to develop a permanent acting company trained in arts and crafts of theater that also reflected the special gifts, talents, and attributes of African-Americans. To produce plays that honestly and with integrity interpreted, illuminated, and criticized contemporary black life and the concerns of black people. And to maintain an affiliation with and provide leadership for other Black theater groups throughout the nation, which I think is so important. They really wanted to, ANT really wanted to be a resource for other groups across the nation. And to utilize its resources to develop racial pride in the theater rather than racial apathy. Now, I think what's important is Alice Childress at this time, she was a young actress. She, she entered the theater as an actress. So when you joined a and you, you were training in your primary art, but you also received training in all the other arts of the theater. So you got training as a playwright. You got training maybe as um, a set builder, as designing lights. There was a real sense of understanding the team and the teamwork that would it that was needed to put on a production of theater, and so this is where Childress really got um, began to receive the the education in other parts of theater besides acting. Now, how does she go from being an actress into being a playwright? That's a great question. I think for her. She said that she was really frustrated by the kind of roles that were available to her and what she could play. Obviously, within the white institutional theater, she was very limited to what was being produced in the roles for Black women. But I think even within Black theater, it was very much about the leading man and mm -hmm. not about the leading woman, especially as she got a little bit older, harder and harder right. to find roles she wanted to play. Absolutely. And to be a part of stories that she wanted to tell, right? So there are two stories that are rumored to have spurned Ms. Childress's first play. One of them is that a young actor, perhaps Sidney Poitier, again, we have no primary source uh, confirmation of this, but it's uh, that Sidney Poitier said to her that no one would wanna watch a show with a leading black woman. So that's one story. The other story is that somebody said to her, well, you can't write a play in just a day. Whether either of those stories is true, we're not sure. But within a day, Ms. Childress wrote her first play, a one act called Florence, 
Leah, do you know a little bit about Florence? Can you tell us about it? I do. So Florence was about a um, middle-aged black woman and a middle-aged white woman in a segregated train station in the American South. And it also had to do with waiting for a young woman to come home who had been trying her hand in the theater in New York. So I think we're starting to see a couple hallmarks of Childress. First of all, she's writing about theater, which is what she knew. And second of all, she's writing for women. And third of all, she is writing interracial casts. So she's mm -hmm. writing for black and white actors. Yeah. And that was kind of rare at the time in terms of black American playwrights. Most of them or many of them, I don't want to say most, but many of them were were focused on telling the, the black American story. So they wrote a lot of plays that were primarily for black actors. Her work was looking at how we work together in men, as many races and what those relationships are. And it enabled her to tell stories that others couldn't. And that brings us up to 1955 when she writes. Huh. <gasps> Trouble in mine, 1955. <laughs> so Did this was like originally called Eight in a Box, which I think gives you a sense of what it's about. It's about eight actors, black and white, in a rehearsal studio. It's actually the back, you know, the stage of a Broadway theater rehearsing for a play. Mm -hmm. A play called Chaos in Belleville. <laughs> which is purportedly an anti-lynching play. Yes, yes. So that's the play within the play, just to be clear. Yeah, yeah so one of the really interesting things about the 1955 uh, production, though, which was her, was Miss Childress's first kind of big union off-Broadway show. And it was at the Greenwich Muse Theater, which was known for doing its best to support Black playwrights specifically. And, um, but there was a white producer working with her that wanted the ending changed. They felt that the ending of her original piece was either too melancholic or too um, ambiguous for the white audiences. And so they asked for a quote unquote happy ending. And Miss Childress, this being her first big production, said she's in, in one of her interviews, she said she didn't know whether or not to fight this idea. And she wanted to make sure that the production went. She wanted to make sure that everybody that had been rehearsing had their jobs. She didn't want to be the reason that there was no longer a show. So she worked on rewrites and that production played with a different ending than the ending you'll see here at Roundabout Theatre Company. But it was optioned for Broadway as a result of this, but the producers wanted even more rewrites. Even more rewrites. Right. And I think so. She rewrote for about two years is what she says. But it got to a point when she says that she looked at her play and she could no longer see her original work. She was like, this is no longer the play that I wrote. And so she refused to do any more rewrites. The producers then refused to do the production and basically negotiations fell away. And so this was around 1957. So she, what was to be the first play by a Black American female playwright on Broadway was no longer. So it was going to be Trouble in Mind. It was no longer. And then two years later, we get... Lorraine Hansberry with A Raisin in the Sun. Yeah. Becoming the first. Becoming the first. And that may have something to do with the reason that Lorraine Hansberry is studied and, and more well-known than Alice Childress. I would imagine it has a lot to do with that because Lorraine Hansberry had a much shorter career, to be honest. Yeah. Like three yeah. major plays. Mm -hmm. And then she tragically passed away. Yeah. Yeah. So you and I really, and also Anna Morton, our literary manager, and the other folks working on the Upstage Guide and Theater Talk-like stuff, really wanted to know what were these changes? What yeah, was, what, were the, what, yeah what, what were the different versions? What was so, in her mind? So what do we do? We send our favorite researcher, Ms. Leah, <laughs> to the Schomburg. Where they have the Alice Childress papers. So I was able to look at all of the versions of the scripts that they have preserved. And most of them are undated. So it's really not possible to say with any certainty what happened. Um, they do have eight in a box, the original version, something declared first draft, and then many other versions. And it's really interesting to see how she's evolving. And there's three major sort of issues that crop up that we've touched on a little bit um, that are important to her life that show up in various amounts in each of these drafts. One of them is unionism. 
The second one is there's different amounts of text about blacklisting in Hollywood, which is something yeah. that she faced and many people of her generation who were politically active like she was faced. And the third version is there's different amounts of discussion of the civil rights movement. It is one of the reasons that you will see a reference to the Montgomery bus boycotts in the Broadway production, even though in 1955 that hadn't happened yet. Our production, Roundabout Theatre Company, is being directed by Charles Randolph Wright, who is now mostly a director, but he was also a dancer, an actor. He is also a playwright. And he's been a member of Roundabout Theatre Company's board since 2005, actually. Oh. And I would say that it's probably at least the last decade that he has been working on Trouble in Mind in terms of getting it to Broadway. It became a big passion of his to get this particular play of Miss Childress's to Broadway. And yes. then we have the incredible Kathy A. Perkins, who is a lighting designer and theater scholar, and she's doing the lighting design for this play. Do you want to talk about Kathy or Ms. Yeah. Perkins? Ms. Perkins. So there's a few things. Uh, in addition to being a very well-known lighting designer and teacher, she teaches at the college level and has for many years. Mm -hmm. Kathy A. Perkins is a theater scholar and theater historian, and she specializes in Black folks not in performing positions. So playwrights, mm -hmm. stage managers, directors, designers. She edited the anthology of Childress's work. Mm -hmm. She worked with Childress on doing so. She met her in 1984 when they were working on a production of one of Childress's plays and had the opportunity to become friends with her and to become friendly. So she's going to be amazing to have as a lighting designer and as someone who's sort of really bringing a firsthand knowledge of Childress and this work into the room. Right. And this is her Broadway debut as an as a lighting designer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, we're not sure exactly how many, but there have not been many black women lighting designers on Broadway. So she she is one of a handful. So and then we have an incredible, incredible talent, LaShans, who is leading the play, uh, playing the role of Waletta. And LaShans won a Tony for the role of Celie in Broadway's The Color Purple. And what I think is really exciting about LaShans is that uh, in, a, in, an in an interview that we did with her, she mentioned that this is, she's been in plays on Broadway, but this is the first time that she is leading, playing the leading role in a play on Broadway, which also happens to be the story within Trouble in Mind of Waletta having a leading part in a Broadway play. So it's kind of, it's so... Um, See, it's, there's such synchronicity there. It's pretty exciting. I'm I'm really excited. Yeah, no, <laughs> Can I you tell I'm excited. <laughs> you're excited. I'm excited. <laughs> and we were saying before, so you have played Willetta. You're playing Willetta right now up in Canada, the Shaw Festival. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we were talking about after I saw the show was that how excited you were to see other Black women get to interpret this really amazing role through their yeah. own experiences. One of the things that's so fascinating about Willetta, I mean, is that is that she is bringing, Willetta is bringing all of her history, you know, she's been in the business for 25 years, the character's been in the business for 25 years, probably mostly singing and dancing, if we look at it in terms of history. And she's bringing all of her experiences, good and bad, to the, to to the show, to the story that she wants to tell here in the play. And I think what's so what's going to be so wonderful that hopefully as more and more theaters start to produce this show is that you will get to see every, many Black women's life experience kind of feed this character. And so that's just going to be very different and very specific for each one. And I think it's I think that's super exciting. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual theater talk for Trouble in Mind, Roundabout Theater Company. It's Broadway debut. We're so excited that you're joining us. We hope to see you live and in person soon. Thank you so much. I'm Nafisa Monroe. I'm Leah Reddy. We'll see Have a you great rest of your day. day. <laughs>